Welcome to this new tutorial and today once again we're going to be using the PCA9685 uh, PWM driver board driving LEDs. Uh, this is a request uh, video and this was after someone wanted me to do some gas lighting effects. Now gas lighting I thought this was going to be easy actually it's a little bit more complicated Let's switch screens and have a quick look at a gas light. Now, this is a very special gas light. Um, this is one that I passed by on my way to church on a Sunday evening. There's another gas light a few hundred meters up the road from it. These are both in Malvern in uh, Worcestershire. These are quite special ones. These, I'm told, are the ones that inspired C.S. Lewis in the book The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. And as you can see, these gas lights are still running on gas to this day. I took this photograph today and uh, you can see the pipe coming up. And these are the mantles at the top. Obviously, it's daytime, so they're just running under the pilot lamp. Again, you can see um, the four mantles in this other shot. And again, the gas pipe going up. I was amazed uh, when I started to do my research into this I discovered that there are over one and a half thousand gas lights still running in London. Turns out British Gas have four engineers that run round all the time. They are mechanically set to go on and off. Amazing stuff. Anyway Researching this, obviously when the gas lights are actually running, um, when I was watching this on a video, there are subtle flickers in the gas light and that is the effect that uh, I was asked to recreate. At first I thought I could just use my fire flicker code, but as we'll see, that doesn't quite work. Now, I'm going to be honest, it was quite difficult uh, videoing the LEDs. The camera absolutely hates being pointed at an LED. But I want you to watch this very short clip and you will see there are about eight LEDs and they are flickering. But the problem is that you will see is they are all flickering together. So just take a look at this video. Now you might wonder, does it matter? Well, actually, it does. Because if you're doing street lighting on a layout, it's very different to having a fire flicker effect. I've got fire flicker effects in a lot of my buildings and there is no problem. If the fires in each building flickered at exactly the same rate, it's gonna be pretty hard to tell because you're looking through the window, you're hardly gonna notice. The problem is, if you were putting um, lights across your layout. Let's imagine that you put 10 lights out. If they all flicker at exactly the same moment, then your eye will pick up the whole lot flickering together. It'll almost look like the power's going on and off. And one of the things, if you're building a model, whether you were using this for a model railway or a model doll's house or whatever, if all the LEDs flicker in time with each other your eye will pick it up and it will actually become very distracting so what i've done some work on is creating a sketch where all the leds flicker randomly but at different randoms and different brightnesses so this is what i came up with So apologies again for the uh, poor video. It's very difficult pointing the camera at the LEDs. But I hope that it was possible on that bit of video to actually see that each LED is subtly changing its brightness. Um, they're all they're doing them randomly 
Uh, so each LED is reacting differently to the one next to it. And that would mean that when that code is multiplied across, the code is written in a way that you could actually use the full 200 and something LEDs if you wanted, if you put enough boards out there. So the idea is if you had a big layout, you wouldn't get that sort of synchronous blinking effect. They would all look random. So that's what I've gone, done. And to be honest, when you're looking at it with the naked eye, it actually looks far, far better than it does on camera. Now, as usual, all the information on this project is on the Digital Town website. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the wiring and all the rest of it. That is all on the site. If we just have a quick look at the wiring diagram, one thing that is a little bit different from the way that I would normally wire up these projects, you will notice that the, I think it's the VC and the V, uh, sorry, V plus and VCC, there's two 5 volt inputs to this board. One basically helps to power the LED side, one is powering the board electronics itself. You'll notice off the circuit that neither of those 5 volts are being drawn from the Arduino. Now obviously you can swap this out for an ESP32 or any other board. I've put the um, various uh, pins below so you can swap it over. So all the 5 volts but everything is all coming from an external 5 volt power supply, not the Arduino 5 volts. That's because this has been designed to use a lot of uh, LEDs. And obviously, if you're using a lot of LEDs, you'd probably get away with eight drawing off the Arduino. But if you start using more than that, and if you want other effects to run, then you're going to really have some problems. And you will see, again, all the um, SDA and SCL uh, pins they're all linked together now you can daisy chain them off the bottom or you can build them like this i tend to build my boards like this because the way i run them on my model railway is this board would be a specific building so i'm working on a project now that would be my workshop because that's got 16 leds in it so i need one board just for that this might be a station building this could be a good shed you know so i will tend to add multiple boards and i just have a central board that I plug everything into and the wires go out. Uh, I'll try and put some pictures of that sort of thing on the next time I do an Isle of Mud railway update. Now one of the things when you're using multiple boards you need to make sure that you solder across different tabs on these boards so you know just pick a couple just make sure whichever ones you solder across they are not the same on each board so without any solder on it you're going to get address 40 start putting solder on one of these or two of these and the addresses will change and of course if you're using multiple boards and the second sketch we're going to look at is actually written with eight boards in mind obviously you need eight different addresses now, as I've just done a video on using LEDs and PCA9685 boards, I'm not going to go through the testing again. It's all on the Digital Town website. Let's just get straight into the code. So in the first version, I'm just going to use a single um, PCA9685 board. Uh, as before, we've got it in here. It's at address 40. Go down to the setup. We've started the board and we've set it to the correct frequency for LEDs. Now, in the main loop, I've got my timer function, current millis, and you'll notice I've got two functions. I've got street gas lights and I've got house gas lights. Now, it's a little bit difficult to tell on that video, but on the video, the um, right four LEDs are actually a different brightness to the left four. Now, until I started researching gas lighting, I had no idea how different gas lights could be. So it turns out 
that if you're modeling gas lights, you actually need to do a bit of research into the time period that you're modeling. There's some resources for this on YouTube. It's amazing what's out there. I've been watching videos of gas lights. But it turns out that at certain points in history, things like the mantle was invented. And when the mantle is added to a gas light, and that's what you could see in those street lights if we just bring back a picture. These um, little glowing things, these are the mantle. It's like a fine mesh. When the mantle was invented, that increased the brightness of the uh, gas light by about 10 times. So depending if you're uh, modeling a mantle gas light or a pre-mantle gas light, the brightness is different. Who knew this stuff? That's what happens when you research. So I've set up two functions. One I've called street gas lights and the other I've called house gas lights. And basically the difference in the two functions is the actual brightness of the lights. Now, you don't have to worry too much about the code. Um, it's quite simple on this one. I've got um, an array that stores various values. And uh, as this thing works through uh, on this version, I've got eight uh, ports zero to eight are running on the street gas lights and 8 to 16 are running on the house gas lights. Uh, you'll see in the next sketch that it's done a slightly different way. That's, this depends how you're doing this. So if you're doing a doll's house or something, if you've got you know, multiple rooms, you would be probably using the house version. And if you've got 16, you just go from 0 to 16. In fact, you would comment out the this line altogether because you just wouldn't need it but i i've just used them both in this one just as an example so what happens is it uses a system you'll notice that random appears over and over and this is causing not only random versions of the luminosity of the led but also random timings between the flicker effect. Now, after sitting watching videos of gas lights, yes, I did watch the video, um, what you tend to find on these gas lights is that on the whole, they burn with a pretty steady flame and then just have a very quick flicker. So what we have here is this is setting up the quick flicker and you can see it's a very low value uh, between 0 0.1 of a second and half a second. And then I've got this other random down here that sets the flicker between one second and five seconds. So one to five seconds is the time that the light is running at, if you like, its correct brightness. And then this these little intervals of 0.1 to 0.5 of a second are the times when it's got a flicker, which in other words is the brightness has reduced. It does not go out. It doesn't go dark like you would with a fire flicker. It's just a redu reduction in brightness. That's why in the video it's quite a subtle effect. So even when it's at its maximum brightness, um, it might sound weird. I've set it so that instead of it being at maximum brightness, it picks a random value between the maximum brightness and 300 below the maximum brightness. I know that might sound weird, but it actually does change very slightly when you're looking at it. And the other version um, on the when it goes dull, it picks a random value between a minimum and normal brightness. When we go to the house version, the only difference is in the setup where I put the values for the maximum value and the minimum values. These values here are very different 
to the values up here. So basically all you need to do is put these two functions in your main loop with current millis. This is non-blocking code. So if you took the decoder um, code that I've just done a demo on, you could add these functions into that sketch and it will not interrupt any other functions on that sketch. So you could have PCA 9685 boards driving servos and doing all sorts of stuff. If you've got non-blocking code, you can add this in and it will have no impact at all on how those other functions work. So this is the first version that I set up as a demo. Now I'm going to show you the version that I would probably use in production. OK, here's the second sketch, version 2, and you'll notice this time we're using four um, PCA9685 boards for house lights and four for street lights. So we could control on this sketch 128 different LEDs. That's quite a lot of LEDs. But again, if you're using a lot per building, you'll soon go through them. So we have the Adafruit um, PM, PWM servo driver library installed as before. But this time, instead of this top line for the setting up the single board, you can see that I now have eight boards. I've set this up so that four are running street lights and four are running house lights. You could alter this to whatever you want. Um, someone was telling me about their club layout, the size of it the other day, and I thought if you had to put street lights on all the roads they've got, you'd probably need 16 of these boards just doing street lights. Now you'll notice the default address is 40, and because this is set up for using multiple boards, tabs have been soldered across, so you finish up getting a different set of addresses. You can get those addresses by doing the I2C scan. If you go to the Digital Town site, you can see how that is done as part of your testing. So we create all of these different boards, and notice you've got to have different names for each one. I've kept the names to pretty sensible names. Sometimes on my own model railway, this would be something like, uh, instead of house lights, it would be good shed. Then it would be station. Then it would be signal box. I tend to use a PCA 9685 board for each building because I do tend to have a lot of LEDs in each one. Um, that's just the way I like it. Right, let's get down to the setup. So in the setup now, of course, instead of setting up a single board, we've now got to set up all of these boards. And unfortunately, it's a sort of copy and paste, copy and paste, and make sure you do a begin and a set PWM frequency for every board. Sorry, you're going to do some typing. Right, by the way, if you want to set this up for your own um, layout and you only wanted a few boards, you could just copy this and just comment out the boards that you don't want or just change the addresses as you need. Once again, when we go down to the main loop, there are just the two different functions that it's calling. And the only difference this time is that when it calls the street light street gas lights function instead of doing one board it's now doing four boards and of course it has to do them twice depending on which bit of the flicker it is now this does mean that if you had multiple boards there if you had an led on port zero on four different boards all those port zero LEDs will actually change brightness at the same time otherwise this code would become unmanageable however what I've managed to do is write the code in such a way that the port zero on board one will be set to a different brightness to port zero on board two board three board four board five and on and on the same is true with the house light functions so again, you know, if you've got multiple buildings with different brightnesses, then that's what you do. Just keep setting these up. You could set up, you could copy these 
functions and um, variables, change the name and create yet another function and alter the maximum uh, and the minimum brightness if you found that you needed to have a slightly different brightness for your LEDs for a, for a specific uh, item. Now, a couple of things about the LEDs. To get uh, the best effects, one of the things I tested was um, rubbing the LED, um, if you like, the clear LED. I used uh, wet and dry paper on it and buffed it up and so basically made a rough surface on it and I found that actually produced a nicer effect to the eye for um, a gas light setting. Um, it just looks better um, but of course it's a little bit more work that you're going to have to do so that's just a little tip for you when you're doing these things. Um, I think that is about everything. I would uh, going back to the wiring diagram just some thoughts on the wiring diagram uh, and how you would put this on a doll's house it's not so bad you're in a small space on a model railway you can be covering some big areas the distance from the Arduino to the PCA 9685 board they don't really recommend going they say three meters um, I would try and keep that distance down to sort of two and a half meters. The other thing to be careful of with these wires is if you're using a DCC model railway, do not run these wires next to your track feeds because you can induce a, um, a weird signal into this. Uh, it won't be so notable with LEDs. If you've got servos, it can be quite alarming that you can actually move the servos doing that. So the way I would I tend to do this is I plonk the um, Arduino virtually in the middle of my boards. I'm on a modular layout, so it's not such a big problem. And then you would go two and a half meters one way, two and a half meters the other way. And if you like, move your boards around as you need. The other trick, of course, you can do is then daisy chain them and then you can have your sort of two and a half meters, I think, between the daisy chain. So that would work. That would allow you to do a far bigger area. The distance from the board to the LED, again, I think you'd get away with two meters without a problem because any interference isn't really going to show on an LED, especially if we're trying to get a random effect. So it shouldn't matter in that way. So if you can imagine now, we could be doing an area probably 10 meters by 10 meters, 100 square meters. If you've got a layout that big, wow, you're fortunate. Anyway, I think that's everything. Um, I hope that has been useful to you. And uh, again, if you've got suggestions for projects, please let me know and I'll see what I can do. And also, you know, you could really help the channel, especially if you click the like and especially the subscribe button, because eventually I'm hoping that YouTube will start to pay for some of the equipment. Uh, because that will allow me to do some projects that I can't currently afford to do. So uh, if you can help in that way, please do. Bye for now.